Hi, Hi I'm, I'm Lydia. Lydia. I'm fifth grade Lydia. And I'm senior Lydia. And we want to share a few things about the Washington Latin Musical. The musical is the only event that takes students from all eight grades of the school. That's right, Mini-Me. Even in a worldwide pandemic, we were determined to extend this legacy of the arts at Washington Latin. A legacy of Lydia's. Something like that. We were on Zoom for 90% of the time. Which is really hard for dance rehearsals. Is that my right foot or is it the Zoom right foot? It's supposed to be like, our way. Yeah. Right, right. And we finally made it for in-person rehearsals, double masked, six feet apart, the whole nine yards. Feels like nine yards. Oh, we are so glad you joined us because it shows how much you care about the performing arts at Washington Latin. So please, please donate. Click on the links that will take you to donate at our website. We've been thinking of you all and we miss you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Cut.
think no longer that you are in command here, but rather think how, when you were, you served your own destruction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Welcome, brothers and sisters. I take as my text this evening the book of Oedipus. Oedipus, damned in his birth, in his marriage, damned. Damned in the blood he shed with his own hands. Oedipus, so pitifully ensnared in the net of his own destiny, net of incest, mingling wives, sisters, mothers, with fathers, sons, brothers. You've heard of Jocasta, whose husband was by her husband, whose children were by her child. How the wretched Oedipus found her body swinging from the cruel cord she had noosed about her neck. How a great sob broke from him, heartbreaking to hear, as he loosened the rope and lowered her to the ground. Now, I would blot out from my mind what happened next. Oh, hear me! For they say this king ripped from her gown the golden brooches that were her ornaments. Yes, Lord! And raised them and plunged them down yes, yes. straight into his own eyeballs. No more. Crying, no more. No more. No, more. no more shall you look on the misery about me, no the horrors of my own doing. Too long you have known the faces of those whom I should have never seen. Too long been blind to those for whom I was searching. From this hour, go in darkness. Oh, oh my Lord. And as he spoke, he struck at his eyes, not once, but many times. And the blood burst from his ruined sockets like red hail. Net of blood. His father's blood. His own blood shed by his own hand. No, no. In Exodus, where it speaks of his death in a place called Colonus, which was sacred, and his redemption there, we direct you to lines 275 through 279, wherein he cries out to his daughters, I could say so much to you if you could understand me, but as it is, I have only this prayer for you. Live where you can. Be as happy as you can. Happier, please God, than God has made your father. Amen.
Thebes. Look upon Oedipus. This is the king who solved the famous riddle and towered up most powerful of men. No mortal eyes but looked on him with envy. Yet in the end, ruin swept over him. Won't you stay? Won't you stay? Let every man and mankind's frailty consider his last day, and let none presume on his good fortune until he find life at his death, a memory without pain. Amen. Daughter, sister. Alas for the seed of man. What measure shall I give these generations that breathe on the void and are void and exist and do not exist? Majestic Oedipus, O naked brow of wrath and tears, O change of Oedipus, I who saw your days call no man blessed, your great days like ghosts gone. Of all men ever known, most pitiful is this man's story. All eyes fail before time's eye, all actions come to justice there, though never willed, Though far down, the deep past, your bed, your dread sirens, are brought to book at last. Child by Laius, doomed to die, then doomed to lose that fortunate little death. Would God you never took breath in this air, that with wailing lips I take to cry. For I weep the world's outcast. I was blind. And now I can tell why. Asleep, for you had given ease of breath to Thebes while the false years went by. Daughter. He speaks, saying, daughter, daughter of a blind old man. Where have we come to? Where have we come to now, Antigone? Now, child. If you can find a resting place. Child, if you can find a resting place. I see someone not far away. Father, you must ask what place this is. Friend. Friend, my daughter's eyes serve for my own. She tells me we are fortunate enough to meet you. Can you tell me what ground is this? What God is on it here? What ground is this? What God is honored here? Fair colonists, land of running horses, where leaves and berries throng, and wine dark ivy climbs the bow. The sweet sojourning nightingale murmurs all night long. Hear the drops of heaven's dew and daybreak all the year. The clusters of narcissus bloom. Time hollowed garlands for the brow of those great ladies whom we fear. Fair colonists, land of running horses, where leaves and berries throng, and wine dark ivy climbs the bow. 
the sweet sojourning nightingale murmurs all night long. Fair Colonus. Fair Colonus, it was ordained. I shall never leave this resting place. Daughter, lead me on. Lead me on, he said. Lead me on. Stop! Do not go on. This place is home. Stop! Stop, stop, you gotta stop. 
is this man? What is his name? Where does he come from? What is his race? Who was his father? My father was Laius of the race Labdakaidae. Do not ask my name. My star was unspeakable. Speak. I am the accursed. I am Oedipus. And while he suffers, there comes a woman riding a pony and wearing a wide hat, crying. Father, she is Ismene, princess of Thebes, sister and daughter to the accursed, sister to me. Father, sister, dearest voices, I have found you, and I don't know how. Father, sister, I hear your voices, but am I dreaming? Are you here right now? Won't you tell me? How shall I see you through my tears? Shall I see you through my tears? I need to know how. How shall I see you through my tears? Ooh, yeah. Father, sister, the gods have spoken. I bring you promise, a holy vow. So glad you're here. There's hope for me. There's a prophecy. Destiny, yeah, yeah. Brings you back to me. A world that cast you out. They forgive you now. Destiny, yeah, yeah. Brings you back to me. I've been waiting for a sign. She tells how his sons Polynices and Ateocles began to itch for power, how they fought till the younger threw the elder out and took the crown, how Polynices went to Argos, committed treason for an army, sold out his city for the promise of his father's throne, how he marches on Thebes now. Brother, the traitor, marches on brother, the usurper, and trembling at his coming, Thebes calls for you. For me? Thebes calls for you to be a shield against your son. Will my soul rest satisfied? Will Thebes bury me in Theban ground? Father, no. Your father's blood forbids it. They will never hold me. Gods, may their fires of ambition never be quenched. Let the last word be mine on this battle. Let them that would be kings of Thebes before sons of Oedipus, let them kill each other.
It will be bitter for them when they stand where you are buried and feel your anger there. But for now, pray to the gods whose ground you violated here and ask their forgiveness. What shall I do? You must first bring water from the spring that runs forever. And when I have the holy water? Take this bowl, put chaplets round the rim. Of myrtle sprigs or wool. Take fleece cropped from a young lamb. How must I perform this rite? You must face the quarter of the morning light and pour out your libation. From this bowl? In one clear stream, empty and fill it again with water and honey, but without wine. And when this earth receives it? Cover this place with olive and pray, Father, saying, Daughters, spirits, be gentle of heart, accept with gentleness the suppliant. Daughters, spirits, be gentle of heart, accept with gentleness the suppliant. What evil things have slept since long ago. Do not open my old wounds and my shame. It is told everywhere and never dies. Thebes married me to evil. Fate and I were joined there. It was your mother with whom the thing was done. Yes, and these two girls of mine were given birth by her who gave birth to me. Then they are your daughters. They're also- Sisters, yes. They're father's sisters. Ah, pity, pity. You suffered. Yes. You sinned. No. You killed- No. You killed your father. God in heaven. You killed him. No, I shall not be just so. In me, myself, you could not find such evil as would have made me sin against my own. Perhaps, perhaps our ancestors angered God long ago. He said, if there were prophecies repeated by the oracles that the father's death would come from his own son, how could you justly blame it upon me? On me who is yet unborn, yet unconceived. He wished to murder me. I did not know him. Before the law, before God, I am innocent. Antigone pleads with the people of Colonus. Reverent men, since you will not suffer my father, the old man that he is, take pity on me and let me intercede. Not with lost eyes, but looking in your eyes as if I were a child of yours. Hear me. I beg mercy for him, a beaten man. We are thrown upon your mercy as on God's. Be kinder than you seem. By all you have and own that is dear to you, children, gods, possessions, I pray you, be compassionate, for you will never find in all the world a man whom God has led escape his destiny. Voice were told where well, I shall die, where my soul shall end, where my soul shall rest. I 
I shall find Say foretold that at my grave Ladies, whose eyes are terrible, spirits upon your sacred ground, I have first bent my knees in this new land. Therefore, be mindful of me and of Apollo. For when he gave me oracles of evil, he also spoke of this resting place. After long years in the last country, where I should find a home among the powers of justice, that I might round out there my better life, conferring benefits on those who receive me, a curse on those who have driven me away. Portents, he said, make me sure of this. Earthquakes, thunder, or God's smiling lightning. But I'm sure of it now. Sure that you guided me and led me here into your hollowed wood. Grant me then, goddesses, passage from life at last and consummation as the unearthly voice foretold. And thus, indeed, I seem not worth your grace, slave as I am to such unending pain, as no man had before. Oh, hear my prayer, sweet children of original darkness. Hear me, pity a poor man's carcass and his ghost. For Oedipus is not the strength he was. Therefore, in the name of God, give me shelter. Give me sanctuary. Though my face be dreadful in his look, Yet honor me, for I come as one endowed with grace by those who are over nature, and I bring advantage to this place.
Father, Theseus has come. In the old times, I often heard men tell of the bloody extinction of his eyes. Even if on my way I'm not informed, I'd recognize him. I'm sorry for him. I too was an exile. Therefore, no wanderer shall come to me as he has done and be denied. This man has asked for grace and offers no small favor in return. As I value this, I shall not refuse this man's desire. see my arrival has been a cause of fear to you. Don't be afraid, and don't be hostile. I'm an old man. I don't want hostilities. Creon, king of Thebes, comes to Colonus. I come for this man here. I'm sent to bring him. I'm the emissary. It was ordered, and it fell to me because I am his relative. Poor Oedipus, come home. Your people summon you. Come home. I grieve for your unhappiness. I see you ravaged, a stranger everywhere, never at rest, leading a beggar's life, with only a girl to help you. Does this not shame our people? In the name of your father's gods, 
Bury this thing now. Agree to go back to your city. And Oedipus answers Creon thus. I, when I was sick, with my own lies evils, and I would gladly lend the fear. You see this city And all its people being kind to me So you will take me away Evil kindness Oh kindness That's the kind of kindness you Offer me Take me away But you will not But you will not You will not You will not take me home You You Take him away You take me away To a prison outside Prison outside these walls You think that way the city will escape my curse? You think you'll get reprieved from punishment? No! No! You'll not get reprieved. What you'll get is all my vengeance active in that land forever. And what my sons will get of my old kingdom is just the room they need to die in. Just the room they need to die in. <laughs> Take him away. You take me away. You will not take him away. But you will not. You take him away. Take me away. To prison outside. Prison outside these walls. You, you take him away. But you will not take You will not take me home. You, you take him away. To a prison prison outside these Time brings you no wisdom. While you were ranting, I have seized your daughters. You have my children. God help me now. And in taking his daughters, he has effectively taken his eyes and left him helpless, as if standing in the wind of death. Line one, strophe two, ode six, as if standing in the late wind of death. Oedipus attempts to go after Creon, and he cries out to him, Creon! Numberless are the world's wonders but none more wonderful than man. The storm gray sea yields to his prows, the huge crests bear him high. Earth, holy and inexhaustible, is graven with shining furrows where his plows have gone. Year after year, the timeless labor of stallions. The light-boned birds and beasts that cling to cover the live fish lighting their reaches of dim water. All are taken, tamed in the net of his mind. The lion on the hill, the wild horse windy maned, resigned to him, and his blunt yoke has broken the sultry shoulders of the mountain bull. 
words also, and thought as rapid as air, he fashions to his good use. Statecraft is his, and his the skill that deflects the arrows of snow, the spears of winter rain. From every wind, he has made himself secure, from all but one. In the late wind of death, he cannot stand. Theseus turns to Oedipus and says, Stay here and rest assured. I will not draw breath until I put your children in your hands. Rapid as air, he fashions for his use, and is the skill that deflects the arrows of snow, the speed, the spears of winter.
Hi, I'm Mr. Baldwin. I'm the director of the Gospel at Colonus. I'm so proud of our backstage crew. I want you to meet them, please. I'm Sam Rigardi, one of the stage managers. Here's Kayla Friedman, our other stage manager, Gavin Neubauer, our technical engineer, and Will Motter, our assistant director. We're taking a moment to ask for your help. For many organizations, the COVID-19 pandemic has crippled earnings. We know we cannot pack them in to sell out houses like last year's musical. We are lucky to have a community here at Latin who understands that events, like a theater production, help inspire and engage students during a very difficult year. We made this production available for everyone to see, but that doesn't mean it's free. Please click on the link below to help us remain financially healthy. Thank you.
eldest son of Oedipus comes to Colonus. Fortunate is the man who has never tasted God's vengeance, where once the anger of heaven has struck, that house is shaken forever. Damnation rises behind each child like a black wave cresting. He sees his father, an old man. He's just an outcast in a strange land. He says, I have been evil. Evil. Everybody's talking about me. I didn't support my father. Son didn't stand by his father. In his hour of need. In his hour of need. Father, shall I weep first for my own misfortunes or for yours? Father, God himself seeks mercy by his throne. So may mercy restrain you now as well. Wrongs may still be healed. Speak to me! Why are you silent? Cause you're evil. You're so evil. Father, I wish some god would give you eyes to see. Theseus has brought us back to you. My children, where are you? Come quickly to my hands. They are your brothers. Hands that have brought to your father's once clear eyes to this way of seeing. Antigone is Manny. My sisters, make him reply. I come on a pilgrimage. He sees his sisters run into their father's side. He says, talk to him. Can't you make him reply? Then he says, Sisters, won't you take my part? And they say, they say, Brother! Poor brother, you yourself must touch his heart. Ah, uh, my dears, be rooted in your father's arms and rest. I will speak out then. I will tell you why I came. I'm a fugitive driven from my country because as the eldest born, I thought fit to take my seat upon his sovereign throne. And for this, my brother banished me. Of this, I believe the furies that pursue him were indeed the cause. So I hear from clairvoyance whom I afterwards consulted. Then. Why should I come here now? He's so slick. Father, these same oracles, they say that those you bless, and only those, shall come to power. My prayers, and those of all who fight with me, must then be made to you. Great captains follow me. Men like Tydeus, Stand. A Tolian thrower of spears, expert Stand in the ways of eagles. Capanius. Stand. Son of Enus, who swore he raised the town Stand of Thebes with firebrand. Parthenopius. Stand. Who roused himself to war for my sake. Stand by me. In the name of these brave men, Stand. and for your own soul's sake. We, your children, Stand by me. we all implore and beg you to give up your heavy wrath Stand. against me. Listen, I pray you listen Stand and comply. Me. But we are beggars, are we not? But both of us are exiles, Stand. he and I. We live by paying court to other men. Stand by me. And the same fate follows us. But as for him, Stand. he lords it in our house, luxuriates there, Stand and he laughs. Me. At both of us, I go forth to punish him who robbed me of my kingdom. 
If you will stand by me in my resolve, I will waste no time or trouble whipping him. And then I will reestablish you in our house and settle there myself and throw him out. If your will is the same as mine, it is possible to promise this. If not, I will die. Liar! Once you held the power And when you did you drove me up Made me a homeless man You know son of mine You know son of mine Oh, you break my heart You break my heart Oh, you break my heart Father, don't do it, don't do it Oh, We think it's no good now heart. For we have placed a curse on you, you break That I now my invoke heart. You shall never oh, see your you native break land my heart. You don't shall never do see it. your native land again Don't do it, don't do it You'll go down oh, all bloody you and your brother too. Yes, you shall die you by your brother's hand. Heart. And you shall kill the oh, man you who banished you. For this I pray and I cry out to the hated underworld that it may take you home. Oh, you to the hated underworld. You Justice still has a place in the sight oh, of God. You Go, we abominate you. We disown you! Father! Wretched son! We cry out to the hated underworld that it may take you home! Love, unconquerable waster of men, surely you must swerve upon ruin here. You have made bright anger strike between father, oh, father, and son, and son. Even immortals cannot escape you. Ooh. And mortal man in his one day's dusk trembles. Trembles. Trembles before your glory. Trembles. Though he has watched a decent age pass by, a man will sometimes still desire the world. I swear I see no wisdom in that man. The endless hours pile up a drift of pain, more unrelieved each day. And as for pleasure, when he is sunken in excessive age, you will not see his pleasure anywhere. Oh my heart. Mm -hmm. Not to be born surpasses all philosophy. The second best is to have seen the light and then to go back quickly from whence we came. The feathery follies of his youth once over. What trouble is beyond the range of man? What heavy burden will he not endure? Jealousy, faction, Quarreling, battle, the bloodiness of war, the grief of war. And in the end, he comes to strengthless age, abhorred by all men, unfriended, without company in that uttermost twilight where he must live with every bitter thing. This is the truth, my friend. Not for me only, a blind and ruined man.
Not for you, but maybe for me. I'm a messed up man. I'm a blind old man. I'm one ruined man. I think of some shore in the north. Concussive waves make stream this way and that in the gales of winter. It is like that with me sometimes. The wild rack breaking over me from head to foot Grace. and coming on forever. Now from the plunging down of the sun, now from the sunrise quarter, Amen. now from where the noonday gleams, Amen. now from the night and the north. Hear it cascading down the air, the God throne, the gigantic holy sound. Terror crawls to the tips of my hair. My heart shakes, my soul is salvation bound. And where my body shall repair, God's lightning opens up the ground. Bless his name. Theseus, Lord of Athens, addresses Oedipus, the accursed of Thebes. Oedipus, heaven's height has cracked. Theseus, your hour has come. This is God's work. My Lord, I long for you to come. My soul sinks in the scale. I believe you. I have seen you prophesy many a thing, none falsely. I would not die without fulfilling what I promised. I shall disclose to you what is appointed for you and your city, a thing that age will never wear away. For every nation that lives peaceably, another will grow hard, push its arrogance, put off God and turn to madness. Fear not. God attends to these things slowly, but he attends. You know this, you know all that I teach. Most cherished friend, you alone may see the place I am to die. My flesh will fill you. For now. And he said unto me, You must never tell it to any man. You must never tell it to any man. For these things are mysteries not to be explained. For these things are mysteries. You will understand when you alone will come on it. Alone, because I cannot reveal it to anyone, not even my children, much as I love them. And he could not reveal these mysteries, even to his children. He told me to keep it secret always. This way God will preserve us from our enemies and hold us and our city safe forever. We must be mindful of his suffering, his death and his redemption, and this our land and all our people will be blessed. Remember me, be mindful of my death, and be fortunate for all the time to come. Remember him. Be mindful of his death, and be fortunate for all the time to come. Let not a friend go down in grief 
has gone down, down, down. it was not war nor the deep sea that overtook him yet down, it was down, something invisible down. and strange it brought him up or down, down into a place down, unseen down. listen as sisters down, mourn their brother and his daughters mourn their father. Oh, father, my dear, now you are shrouded in eternal misery. Yet even in that absence, you shall not lack our love. He lived his life. He died where he chose to die, and his eternal bed is well shaded. Even in his death, he is not unmourned. Yet my eyes are blind with tears from crying for you, Father. Crying. That terror and that loss, it cannot be quieted. I know you chose to die in a land among strangers, yet your death, it was so lonely. lonely. Why could I not be with you? Remember that his last hour was free and blessed. I want to see the resting place in the earth. That is not permitted. He has no tomb. Where shall I go? How shall I live? Oh, Take me there and kill me too. Great God, what way is left me? 
Mourn no more. Those to whom the night of earth gives benediction should not be mourned. Retribution comes. Mourn no more. Those to whom the night of earth gives benediction should not be mourned. Retribution comes. Retribution comes. Retribution comes. Rejoice, sisters. He has left this world. That is the thing that seems so marvelous. You know, for you were witnesses. Yes, Lord. How he left this place with no friend leading him, acting himself as a guide for all of us. When he came to a steep place in the road, the earth groaned with thunder from the God below. 
And as they heard the sound, the girls shuddered and dropped to their father's knees and began wailing, oh beating oh their heart. breasts yes. and weeping as if heartbroken. Yes. And hearing them cry out so bitterly, he put his arms around them and said to them, Children, this day your father is gone from you. All that was mine is gone. You shall no longer bear the burden of taking care of me. I know it was hard, my children. Yet one word frees us of all the weight and pain of life. That word is love. Love, love, love. love. Never shall you have more from any man than you have had from me. And now you must spend the rest of your life without me. They clung together and wept, all three. Then there was silence. And in the silence, suddenly, a voice cried out of such a kind, it made our hair stand in panic and fear. Again and again, the voice came from his god. Hear me. Oedipus, Hear Oedipus, me. Oedipus, why are you waiting? You delay too long. You delay too long to go. This much every one of us heard God say. And after a little while, as we withdrew, we turned around and nowhere saw that man. In what manner Oedipus perished, no one of mortal men could tell. Mm-hmm. It was not lightning mm-hmm. bearing its fire no. that took him off. No, no. No hurricane was blowing. No, Thank you, but some attendant from the train of heaven came yeah. for him. Yeah. Or else the underworld opened in love the oh. unlit door of earth. Oh. For he was taken without lamentation, suffering, or pain. Praise. Praise. Indeed, his death was wonderful if oh, mortals wonderful. ever was. Mercy. Wonderful. Oh. Now, yes. let the weeping cease. Yes. Let no one mourn again. No more. The love of God will bring you peace. There is no end. Thank you.
Let no one mourn again. These things are in the hands of God. Hi, I'm Hala, and I'm a senior here at Washington Latin. I'm Ravi, I'm in sixth grade, and we want to thank you for attending the Gospel at Colonus today. Yeah, it took a lot of hard work, time, and effort to make it happen. You know what else it took? Funding. Dollars. A lot of it. <laughs> so, if you want to say thank you, please click on the link below. Remember, you didn't buy a ticket this year. So, please don't forget us, and keep the future of the performing arts at Washington Latin bright. I'm the future! Yes, you are! Thank you for your help. Thank you.